Can you hear me? So, welcome everyone. My name is Alexander Gassmann. I am the head of sales of TTS. And for me it was fantastic yesterday to land at Alexander the Great Airport and to spend the night in the Alexander Palace Hotel. So, being Alexander, I feel very much at home. <laughs> so thank you for that wonderful reception in this lovely town of Skopje. So, TTS is a company which is working on knowledge. And I must thank my previous speaker. We had not, let's say, prepared this. But everything he said is fully in line with what we think since 1998. And so thanks a lot for <laughs> giving this insights uh, from a corporate perspective. And by the way, if we look here at ERP concept, you see discover your business solution, implement SAP faster, which is important, but also increase your value and shape your knowledge. And so we TTS, we are here to help shape knowledge. We are here to transfer knowledge. And this is why TTS is called uh, the knowledge transfer company. <clears throat> so this is our offices in Heidelberg. I am sitting in this room over here, so very nice view. We have the Neckar River just behind the building, so very nice. And as you see, we are also present in Vienna, which is the office which is also coordinating the Eastern Europe approach. And I would like to quickly introduce you to Hans Eder, who is our Eastern delegate. <laughs> so if you have questions later about the product, you also can go and see Hans or myself. <clears throat> So, as you can see, we are quite successful in what we do. Uh, the company exists since 1998, but I just showed you the figure of the last four years. And as you see, as I arrived in 2008 in the company, we had close to 8 million revenues, and we have now been able to increase that to 20 million euro revenues in four years, which is quite a good development. And why is that so? It is because everyone today has realized that knowledge is key. It's really an investment. It's not only a cost, it's an investment, because that secures your productivity. We have now 150 employees from 21 different nationalities. We have many international projects, so many different customers in many different areas. We are also developing France, for the moment, uh, and we will be setting up a French activity probably this year. And as you can see, Eastern Europe is growing. Let me give you some words about TTS. So TTS was created in 1998 by Mr. Schröder, and Mr. Schröder was the 60th employee of SAP. So. It's a, he was working very long time for SAP, and in 1998, so more than 10 years ago, he created TTS. And why did he create TTS? He was at SAP, and he saw many SAP projects. And they were very technical, these projects. So there were very little training. So like people were saying, they have a mouse, they know how to use SAP, okay? Why should we train them? <laughs> and then, there was some training, but it was very modular training. F-E-C-O-M-M-S-D. So in the different SAP modules was the training. And the problem is, if I'm, for example, a maintenance planner, I will need a little bit from finance, a little bit from controlling, a little bit from SD, so little pieces everywhere. So if I go to every training of F-E-C-O-M-D and so on, I will sit there for three days. One day is interesting. Two days I lose my time because it's not for my job, and there's two days missing which I really need. Okay? And so one of the innovations of TTS was to design all the trainings based on the processes of the end customer and the roles of the end customer. So we were looking at which is the process, which is the role, and from that we derive the needed training need. Yeah? So we also call this a training need analysis. Okay. Then 
customers came back and said, we want to reduce training cost. So we said, OK, we will now use e-learning as well as classroom training. So since 1998, we have SAP trainers to do classroom trainings. And since 2000, we have a team of people creating e-learning content for customers to decrease overall training costs by adding e-learning in the training campaign. And then in 2001, the trainers were crying because they said, oh, I have again to do an SAP documentation, screenshot, writing down the enter click instructions, circling this and writing and writing and screenshot and, and every time new, because every new SAP project is different, SAP is customized, what a terrible thing. So we invented a software, which is TT Knowledge Force, which I will demonstrate, that allows you to automate the creation of this training documentation. Okay? <clears throat> so roughly, the line in the middle here is the productivity of employees. And if you don't change something, their productivity remains the same. Now, if you introduce change, the productivity goes down. It's normal. People fight the change. They have to look into it. They have to learn. And then, slowly, the productivity will go back. But this is not a very nice curve, because you invested in the IT project. You had no return. This is better. So we have to try to decrease the impact in the beginning, and we have to try to make it better after the training phase, after the go-live. So at TTS, over the last 14 years, we have developed a methodology, which we call extended learning. And with this methodology, we can help to manage this. First, plan your knowledge. So training need analysis, look at the roles, look at the processes, find out who needs to know what. Second part, create the knowledge. So use TT Knowledge Force to build the training content based on what you found out in the analysis phase. And we can help to reduce the effort to create training content by more than 50% in comparison Word, screenshot, da da da. To change the content here, there's an update, then you can even increase up to 80% the effort, or decrease by 80% the effort to create, to update. So now you have created the content, you now do the training. So to do the training, you transfer knowledge, you push the knowledge to the users. You say, you have to go to this training. OK, yes, I go to the training and I will learn. So, But I get a push of content from the corporation. Now comes go live, and I have to learn uh, to, to work with the system, really in my process. And the training was three weeks ago. Hmm. How was that again, the detail? Hmm. I don't remember so well. OK, so in this case, we have to find ways how people, when they use the knowledge, they can very quickly come back to this. So they will pull the content, OK? So transfer knowledge, push content, use knowledge, pull content. And when you push content, you push maybe 20 or 30 lessons. If you pull the content, you will only pull a little piece of information, just a little one, the one you need now. Yeah? So we have technologies to help in the use knowledge. So before, 100% of knowledge was trained in the classroom. Then, and as we have seen it even in universities, more and more now, e-learning is coming. Yeah? So the share of e-learning based training is increasing, and we have beginning maybe with 20%, maybe with 50%, and then nowadays we have some 90%, for example, 
It's not the best, I wouldn't say so, but sometimes it happens. For example, Commerzbank has bought Dresdner Bank two years ago, and we provided the technology because they had to train 40,000 people of Dresdner Bank to use the IT systems of Commerzbank in less than six months. A very big project. And there was no other way to deploy this knowledge than by a high share of e-learning. Now, think a second about not training people. Hmm, interesting. Why should we decide not to train people? Let me take an example. Office 2010 migration. I don't know how many of you have already enjoyed the transition from Office 2003 to Office 2007 or Office 2010. Do you remember where the buttons are? Hmm? difficult. <laughs> so they are all changed, okay? So in this case, we don't need to train people about how, what is Office. We don't need to train them what is Excel, what is a pivot table. They know this already. So why don't we just train a very little push of one hour, like a motivation session. It's a new Office, the productivity is better, and well, yes, the buttons are a bit different, the only thing you have to remember from this session, you have a panic button. Press the panic button, everything will be fine. Yeah? And then we make available the content through pull. So we actually do not train them about, about Office, so really we have here about 13 hours of e-learning content which is available for migration to Office 2010, but everyone presses the panic button only when he needs it. So he will access only maybe 30 minutes, maybe one hour of content just when he needs it. And the content is small, five minutes, 10 minutes pieces, maybe even 60 second pieces. So very little time to invest and the biggest return because they do micro learning on the job, okay? In the normal SAP project, what we now recommend from an approach is to say of 100% of training content, let's decide not to train 40% because, for example, this is only an occasional transaction, something you use only from time to time. Yeah? Then uh, we can decide not to train it. So we do some training in presence, classroom training. It's more about the processes, how it works, how it fixed together, what happens before, what happens after, uh, what about the colleagues, we use 30% in e-learning to explain about the using the system and so on. And then when they need something, they just press the panic button and retrieve the content. So this is it. This is TT Knowledge Forum. This is an integrated software to create content and to publish content. And this is the planning phase, this is the creation phase, and this is where you can then push the content or make it pull by the learner. And let's not forget, your SAP system changes, right? So we need ways how to refresh your training documentation when your SAP system is changing. And we have a system called re-recording that allows to do this. So we will look a little bit at how this can look like. So let's start with a very simple example of such a training object. And the way this works, you just do a recording in the SAP system and from that is created automatically two things. One, a documentation, and second, an e-learning. It's the same work, one recording, and then the result. So I will show you a very simple example. So this is the documentation, and I just created it quickly before the, the session, where you see here, a screenshot 
where you can see one, two, one enter this into the transaction code field and two, click the enter button. So I recorded the SAP transaction and the result is the screenshot, the one, the two. So this is all generated automatically. I have added as an author this text to explain why would you do it. Yeah? So we go on. You see the next step. I have to enter a material number. Then I click the overview button in SAP. Then I click on details from item. Then we then enter a number. And then it shows me for this specific material number also the stock level. So this is what is in the stock. So it's a, let's say, seven step transaction. Very simple one, but just to explain how it works. And we now look at the e-learning, which is the same result of what I have recorded. This is an introduction screen. This is a, to explain about the process, where it happens. And now, this is the first page of my SAP. And you see down here, it says enter MBO3 into the transaction code field. So this is what I will do. I do it in an interactive way. I type MBO3. Then he asked me next, click the enter button. So if I click here, I get a feedback that's wrong. I click here, feedback that's wrong. Third time, wrong. But you see now I have a red frame where I should have clicked. So I learn by my mistakes. Yeah? And then the next time I probably know better how it works. Now I have to enter material number. So let's do this. And so on. So I just use the transaction as planned. Okay? So I can just test it for myself. And I have also different ways. I can not only do it interactively. I can look at it like a film. So that's the other way. I can navigate in this unit with a sitemap, and so on. So this is all the result of my work. And now you could ask yourself, how much time did I need to create these two outputs? My answer is five minutes. Five minutes. Because I used the SAP system. Our system was looking at it. And it generated the documentation, and it generated the output from the e-learning view. So what I will do now as a next step to show you how easy it is to update the content, I will now create a German version of this, because you have several languages in Eastern Europe. And in this case, let me do now an example in German language. So I will create a variant of this content. And I will say, now I do a German one. And you see, we have many languages we support. So I have now to do a little title here. OK, next. Next. I create a copy of the source document. And I open it. So now I am in the system which allows me to change the content. And just as an example how easy it is, look at this. And by the way, if you can use PowerPoint, you can also use this more or less. Because you see on the left is a little picture of each page. And to the right is then what you can work on. So for example, if I want that this has an animation, I do a right mouse click. I add an animation. And say fly in straight from the right, for example. And I can even add a trigger effect. So if the mouse goes over it, something else appears. I trigger a tooltip, text box, or choice object. Here we go. So I can test this also directly in my authoring environment, which is also very, very powerful 
I press the play button up here, you see how the text box flies in. And if I go with the mouse over it, bing, you see it's already connected. So it's very easy to create multimedia content, which is easy to explore. We can add sound, we can add video, whatever. And now I go into the step list. So these are the number of steps I did the first time. So remember, when you do the recording, our system looks at every step. Yeah. Now, in Germany, this material number does not exist. So I change it to another material number before doing the re-recording. And now, I start the re-recording, but before I have to log in into my German SAP system, Okay, and now I go back and I start the re-recording. I select SAP and now I go drink my coffee <laughs> because what the system is now doing, it is clicking for me in the SAP system. So I did my first recording in English, in my English SAP system. Now I created a variant for the German system and now the system clicks through SAP like I did it in the English one. So now it creates automatically the documentation for German. Yeah. So the result is something like this. Where you already see that the screenshot is now in German, the text is in German, it's already localized. I could now also translate with one click the manual text which I have entered. So as you can see, it's very, very easy. So again, you save 50% of time the first time when you create a content, and you save up to 80% of time when you create a local variant or when you create uh, let's say a version uh, which just changes. So you just record your new SAP screen from the old transaction. So actually very, very simple. So with our system, you can create multiple outputs. So the way this works, we have here the possibility to structure the processes in Knowledge Force. You use Knowledge Force to create the content. You then push the content to the users with Knowledge Force or with a learning management system, like for example Moodle or Blackboard or others. And then the user can then pull the information from the live system. So remember this panic button we were talking about. So not only we look at what the user is doing, but we also look at where he is doing it, okay? So, if I'm now, for example, in Word, and I go into the print menu, I have to start the panic button. It's called quick access. And if I now press the quick access, and you can see the quick access is the little icon down here. So this is installed on the PC. It always looks what the user is doing. And when the user is somehow lost, he presses this button. And automatically, we call the database. Hello, there's a user. He's panic mode in this screen. Have you documentation for the screen? And so we look at all the learning objects which are in the system and find the right documents for the screen. And the author does not have to manage this. Our system manages that. So I press now the button. And I waited a bit too long, so I'm in Word. I press my panic button. And we have here the lesson about printing in Office. So for example, if I now go into Outlook, 
and I work on my tasks. And sorry if the example is in German, but my user interface of Office is in German. That's why for the moment it's in German. But it's adjusted automatically to, to every language. So for example, I'm right here. I now press again my panic button. And you see now how it presents me in e-learning about how to do my tasks in Outlook. Okay? So it, it, it finds immediately for my screen the right support knowledge. And another part which is quite nice about Knowledge Force is that it not only allows you to create content for IT, but you can also create content for general topics. So it's not related to the IT screens. For example, Adidas. I mean, Adidas is a customer of ours for a long time. And Adidas has uh, asked us to do content for their retail university. So all the shop, the people in the shops, they have to learn on how to sell Adidas products. So this also is with Knowledge Force. And by the way, we generate um, pure HTML output. So you don't need a flash or you don't need uh, any plugin. Every learner just needs a browser to look at the content. And then here's a lesson about introduction to Adidas. And we go to the next page. There's now then a film starting. The emotion about Adidas. Then there's uh, an introduction to the Adidas groups with the logos flying in and so on. These are all things that normally in the past you would do with Flash, for example. But this is not Flash. This is now done with TT Knowledge Force. It's pure HTML output. And if you talk about HTML, We'll come to that later. We probably want to see it on the iPad as well. So we'll come to that part in the mobile learning part. So another example of what you could do is, for example, here, uh, a BlackBerry e-learning. So it's more, let's say, explaining about how to use a BlackBerry. So there's a little avatar which is explaining, and there's also voice in the background. I just switched it off for the moment. And so it's about trackball navigation. It explains how the BlackBerry is then used. And you can actually simulate now the usage of the BlackBerry. If you want to create a new mail, it explains you step by step on how to do it. Okay? So many areas on which the training content can be created with Knowledge Force, either for SAP or any other Windows-based application. It can also be a web-based application like salesforce.com or Oracle. Or you can use non-IT topics, for example, Adidas, or with, which we see later, for example, about product training. Um, so all these fields are covered. Now we have an innovation. And I will close my speech with that little innovation. And that is the TT Guide. So to explain, Knowledge Force is a comprehensive suite to prepare, so find out the training needs, to create the training content, and then to prepare the users by training them. And when they start to use the system, they have a, a panic button to retrieve the content in the moment they need it. So here you do the push, and here you prepare for the pull. But after a while, your SAP project, the team has completed its work. They go away. And now how is it going on? Because then you have the key users, you have the support organization, and they have to work together to find a way how to quickly help people when they have a problem. Okay, so. With Knowledge Force, you have this panic button. You can then open the, the e simulation, and you have then the second screen, your SAP. Or you can press the panic button. You have the documentation, which you can print. You put it beside the screen, and you try to use it in the real system. Yeah? But it's, it's, uh, it's nice to have it. It's very good to have it. But it might be better if the system actually helps me in the SAP system or any other application. And that's why we have created the guide. 
So if we come back to a little example, this was about the showing the stock entry of um, a specific material number. I can now start the guide. So I would press the panic button and the guide takes over the screen. So you see here the screen is gray and I have the feeling to be in a real system because I am in a real system. I am no longer in a simulation of the system. And if I click on this button, for example, it's just intercepted. I cannot use it outside of what the guide will give, allow me to do. Yeah? So here, I had to enter MBO3. I asked him to do this for me. Now I have to do this. OK, fine. Now I have to enter a material number. So let's take any one, for example, 7. So here I have now the ability to put my number in, the one I am need to look up, not the one which the author has recorded in the beginning, my number I put in there. Yeah. Then next, now I click on the symbol. You see, it's, I'm following like, like in a satellite navigation system. I'm in the sat-nav mode now. Yeah. I don't have to think, I just do. And now the guide is complete. Okay. So basically, it's actually a very, very simple thing. And the guide allows me to retrieve information in the moment I really need it. So let's take another example. I am uh, in my SAP system and I've forgotten how to register that my company car is broken. Yeah? So I just start a guide. And I, for example, put here malfunction of my car. Oh, I have to look in the English content. So we have here malfunction report, OK. And again, step by step, I'm guided. So this is the next way on how we can allow end user support. And the creation of the guides is very, very easy. The creation of the guide is just like pressing the record button and doing it, then adding some little text in every step to help the user what he has to fill out. So it's actually a very, very simple approach. OK? So I will stop the guide, because else he won't allow me to show PowerPoint. Basically, the technology we provide, and which you can access through ERP concept, allows you to reduce the effort invested in the beginning into the creation of the training material. It allows you to prepare the, trainer, the, the trainees, so the users, in a very effective way. It allows you to make the training content available in the moment they need it with a panic button. And you can then start to create a community of people using the guides, creating the guides based on the different requirements. So this is what I wanted to show you in a nutshell. And one very nice feature of the Knowledge Force platform I will show you a bit later after the break, which is about the mobile learning approach. Because we now have the possibility not only to publish the content for normal PCs, but we also can publish it on mobile devices. And that is something which I will show you later. I would like to thank you for your attention. And thank you.